Hey YouTubers, Easy Jeezy here. Wanted to talk to you today about some air dryers. Uh, found one of these that they uh, had basically pitched down at the plant. It's a little smaller than the one Darren's got, but uh, I thought I might throw out a few comments on there that would be helpful to somebody. Uh, this particular one says Johnson Controls on it. There's, you know, Honeywell, every company in the uh, HVAC field makes these, puts their own name on it, but it's really uh, a culmination of generic products just assembled in a certain way. Uh, if you have problems with one of these things or see a used one and think you might be able to fix it, let's just run a few things across. The purpose of this dryer is to remove moisture that's going through your air system for you guys that are wanting to spray paint a small unit like this and that's something that you want to check there should be a tag someplace on the on the, on the unit this one's on the cover that says uh, the capacity 125 psi and there should be a CFM reading on here uh, rated at 23 SCFM at 80 psi inlet air pressure 100 degrees ambient temperature. Heck, some of you guys live in areas where the ambient temperature is that hot. Now, another important thing that you need to look for is what kind of refrigerant. This one's got 134. That's uh, compatible with uh, modern stuff. If you can find an old one that's uh, uh, R12, it's they don't sell that refrigerant anymore off the market. There's still a million refrigerators out there and drinking fountains and whatnot running on it. But uh, to get replacement stuff for it, there's a there's a difference between the oil. That was old mineral oil. The new refrigerants use a polyester oil and they're not compatible. You can flush out a system but you need to be a refrigeration guy and know what you're doing if you're going to start making those type of changes. Uh, they did do it in cars for a long time though. I mean they had R12s and they changed out the compressors, put 134 in there, going down the road, happy as could be. So, you know, I, I don't have much experience with that or this one for that matter, but I know a little bit about it. The compressor is this black can right in here and that's your, your pump that's, uh, that's cooling. It's, uh, it's changing the, uh, the state of the refrigerant. When it, you put it in a low pressure state, it's colder and that's where you're trying to absorb the uh, uh, the heat when you absorb the heat you're making the tube colder and the moisture particles will condense which makes a drop of water and it will separate it and the air goes on without the moisture and that's what you're striving for to get a better paint job no water in the paint now, on Darren's he said that the uh, compressor was humming, making a humming noise. Well, on the outside of the compressor, you can't do much if the internals of the compressor are broken, but there's a little click switch here, just a little click switch. It's a heater. It's an overload protector. And that could be bad. That could be one thing. If you, I don't see one on here, but a lot of them have an external capacitor. Uh, the capacitor builds up a charge of electricity to give it a punch so that that compressor can run. You, if it's off for a period of time, the pressure equalizes on both sides and there's not much load on it to start. That's why a compressor might start when you initially turn it on, plug it in, but if it has to restart uh, during the operation, uh, it may not restart. It'll sit there and hum and buzz or trip the breaker or do something like that because if the capacitor is gone bad it uh, it doesn't have the punch to overcome the compression even though it's a small compressor so you want to look on the outside uh, it's usually a little round disc that's up against the side of the can and what it is doing is sensing heat that's another thing to protect the can if the overall can gets hot because the motors cooking <laughs> inside then it's going to trip out and you'll get that humming effect Another thing that often happens with these cheaper compressors, uh, inside it does have that motor and it is 
you know, it torques every time it starts. And they have these little springs that hold the motor up off the bottom. There's oil in there, you've got your refrigerants. Everything is bathed in this refrigerant and it cools, helps cool the motor in addition to removing the moisture from the air. And what happens, uh, if you drop one of these, if you are rough, handle it rough, uh, or even after a long period of time of all those torques, one of those springs will crack or break and it, it runs, it might make a little noise. A lot of times you'll hear these old refrigerators, I mean, we're talking really old guys, stuff from the 40s or 50s is still running today. But uh, somebody's got one out in their garage and every time it shuts off, it goes bang, 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 bang. Knock, knock, knock. You know, every time it starts, it runs fine and then when it shuts off, it goes knock, knock, knock. Well, that's the motor, the spring is broke and the motor inside is, is hitting up against the side of the case and it'll eventually wear a hole or short it out or you know any number of things. It could crack a pipe inside. It just uh, work hardens from being flexed all the time. And those are some of the issues that you run into here. But you got a, uh, a fan for the condenser and those are cheap, worth replacing. The compressor is probably you know 150 bucks wholesale. I don't know what the heck they cost. Uh, but if you know a refrigeration supply house or know somebody you can go in there and say you know this is for such and such a company can can you can I buy it at their price and pay the tax and I don't know if you've got any connections that way um, the overall unit can range in price I saw them in the Granger's catalog from nine hundred dollars up to three thousand dollars depending on the size and capacity and accessories with it so uh, this particular one has a charge tube with a Schrader belt. That's very unusual. Uh, most of the time when the factory puts in the charge, they pinch the tube and then they'll solder the end and you can't put gauges on it to see what's going on. This little unit here even has a, uh, even has a little uh, gauge. I was just running it to see what it would do and it's, uh, it's almost in the green there but that's uh, the uh, refrigerant pressure and it gives you an indication of the condition of uh, the system and how it's working. The pressure will change if you don't clean these things, if you don't do the maintenance on them. A lot of places don't. The, uh, when the little radiator gets uh, clogged up with dust and lint or paint primer and stuff, it, uh, it's good to put maybe a little like a furnace filter in this if you're in a dusty environment like your garage over there when you're painting it looks like everything gets fogged up and sand and all that uh, bondo and stuff so it wouldn't hurt to have uh, whatever you end up with to keep this clean and and blow it out with compressed air occasionally the cover comes off it's easy to access and these other uh, separators uh, these are just aftermarket ones that uh, are typical traps moisture traps but uh, the idea of having the uh, compressor to lower the pressure really, really wrings out a lot of that water. I mean, it, it's getting the last drop out. But uh, that's about all I can tell you on it. You can, you can take a, uh, if you have an amp meter, uh, where's my tool pouch here? I got one. I, you know, there's different kinds. There's the old ones. This is a digital one. You, you uh, pick your compressor uh, lead and you, uh, you put your amp meter on it and uh, you have to plug it in while it's running. If it's not running, it's just sitting there humming. You ain't going to probably get anything, but if it's, uh, you're going to get a high reading. On the motor tag, uh, it'll tell you what the uh, locked rotor amps are supposed to be when this baby is, is running. And that just goes to a light. Let's see, I want my black wire from my power cord. You put it on there and you can measure the amperage while it's running. That's also an indicator of how hard your compressor is working. And as it gets clogged up with dirt, that amperage is going to go up. On a small unit like this, it's going to be tenths of an amp. Uh, you, you're not dealing with, with big stuff. But uh, shucks. Uh, and if you take your meter, that's another thing you can do. Uh, yours is humming, but on one that doesn't even hum, you can measure to ground and sometimes they'll short out to ground on the case and uh, it, it's dead. you got to change the can. 
but you have to precisely measure that charge that goes in there and make sure you get the right size compressor and they, they'll cross-reference that at the supply house you know and just write down the numbers on this and uh, like this is it comes up uh, it says uh, 1997 was the date and it's a uh, 343OY something but uh, write down all the numbers that are on the top of the can and uh, look online maybe you could you know it all depends on what you want to do uh, might not be worth spending any money on it might be uh, something to throw up on Craigslist and just flip it just the way it is. Somebody who has the tools uh, and the scale and the gauges and all that stuff, they might be able to do something. A shop that does uh, those apartment house, we call them the wall bangers, those uh, window air conditioners, that's the same class. A, a company that services those would probably know and have the stuff to service something like this. Uh, so. Uh, Hope that helps somebody out there, and uh, hope you're making the best of your day, and uh, get out there in the garage and keep working on some of those projects. We like watching them. Hit that record button. Thanks a lot. Talk to you later. Easy Jeezy out.